In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and run BitMessage on Windows. Currently, BitMessage is at version 0.3.4. Um, and your first step, you're going to want to open up your web browser, navigate to bitmessage.org. Once the page is loaded, go into the download section and click the icon to download for Windows. This will download the executable file. Once you have downloaded BitMessage, you can go to your downloads folder and you can double click BitMessage and run it from here. I'm actually going to show you a couple of extra features and I'm going to create a new folder called BitMessage. You can call it whatever you would like. It's not important. Uh, then I'm going to drag and drop BitMessage into this folder. We're going to run BitMessage. It's going to prompt us, uh, are we sure we want to run this file? I'm going to deselect that I don't want to be asked every time I run this file. Um, and that's it. There's no installation necessary. There's no other steps involved. You're running BitMessage. And again, you can run this straight out of your downloads folder if you would like. Um, it automatically creates settings files in your app data, uh, which is stored on your computer. But if you would like to run BitMessage on a thumb drive, or you would like to have it movable, or you can move it around, or you would like to store it inside of a TrueCrypt volume, um, go to Settings, Settings, Run in Portable Mode, click OK file quit so we're going to restart bitmessage and you can see it's already generated some of the files here so when you run bitmessage for the first time it generates these files in your app data folder but since we clicked run in portable mode it generates them here um, locally to bitmessage in the same directory so now we can take this folder and put it on our thumb drive put it in a true cut partition whatever you would like when you run bitmessage from here it will access these files for the settings and keys that type of thing so I'm going to run BitMessage again, and again, this is not necessary. You can just run BitMessage uh, right off of your desktop or right out of your uh, downloads folder if you don't plan on using it with a thumb drive or anywhere else. So the first you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go generate an identity. So go to your identities tab, click on new, and you have two options. You can generate a random address or you can use a passphrase to generate an address. This uses a passphrase uh, in conjunction with the algorithm to generate your address name. So if you, for instance, lost your password, you could use this passphrase to regenerate it again or generate it on another computer, um, you know, if you weren't in access of your regular account. Although, you do need to use a very secure passphrase because anyone that uses your same passphrase would have the same account, and you don't want that. So if you're not worried about that, if that's not something you're interested in, just make sure to leave it at use a random number generator to make an address. Um, I'm not going to select spend several minutes of extra computing time to make the addresses one or two characters shorter. Um, that just does what it says. Spends a couple extra minutes making the address shorter which would make it more Twitter friendly or shorter to type. Um, whatever benefit you would like. Go ahead and click OK and it will generate us one address. I can double click here and give it a label, my identity whatever you would like to label it. Um, you're the only one that will see labels. It's just for your use only. And you, again, you can generate as many identities as you would like. Uh, and you can use whichever one you would like. Um, you can right click on them and you can enable them, disable them so that they uh, don't receive messages, don't receive messages, uh, re-enable it again. Uh, this is also where you can set it to behave as a mailing list and a mailing list receives messages and then it sends those messages out as a broadcast from its address. Um, but you have to leave your client running for that to work. So I'm not going to select that. I'm just going to leave it here, leave it normal. Go ahead and hit uh, copy to address to clipboard if you would like to send it to one of your friends or post it online somewhere. Under the subscriptions tab, we see that we are by default subscribed to the official news releases and announcements broadcast. Um, this is any type of a broadcast related to BitMessage is sent out automatically and you will see these in your inbox. Uh, an address book, we can add a new entry to, if we have a friend, we can give them a label and give them an address. And until you enter a valid address, it will not allow you to add this to your address book. Blacklist allows you to blacklist and whitelist certain addresses. And the network status tab shows us that we are currently catching up with the network. We have eight connections. We're on stream one, and we've currently processed around 600 personal messages, 170 broadcast messages, and 1,500 public keys. 
since we started up at this time. Every time you start it up, it will have to catch up with the network. Um, we'll, we'll, pro we'll have to uh, process these items. The longer you're offline, if you're more, if you're offline more than two and a half days, you have to completely re-catch up with the network. Down here at the bottom right hand side, you may notice the indicator icon. You can click on this indicator icon for more details about it. If it's red, you have no connections, you are not connected to the network. If it's yellow, you are connected to the network, but you are not allowing incoming connections. This is all right, you're still processing messages for the networks. You're still receiving messages um, and sending messages. You just aren't allowing new users to connect to you. Basically, you're not initiating the connection. Um, if it's green, then you are allowing incoming connections. So you're allowing other users to uh, initialize the connection to you. We're going to go back to the send tab and we're going to send a message from my identity. You can choose whichever identity you would like to send from. We're going to send a regular message, not a broadcast. If you send a broadcast, there's no to because you're sending it from your address to everyone on the network. So anyone with your address can see it if they're subscribed to you. So we're going to send a regular message. We're going to go back to the BitMessage homepage and we see there is an echo server address here. So I'm just going to highlight it, copy it, and I'm going to right click paste to send a message to that echo server. You can also load an address from your address book. Just enter in some criteria here and click send. So this is the way you send a message to anyone that you would like to send a direct message to. Um, it takes you automatically to the sent tab which shows the to address, the from identity, the subject, and the current status of the message. So we see that it is currently doing proof of work to get the message ready to be sent out to the network. Once that is done, it is sent to the network. Um, then we'll wait for an acknowledgement from the recipient that they got the message. And then we'll see that they got the message and then we'll just be waiting for a reply from them. So I'm going to pause it while we wait for this to come back. I'm going to go back to the inbox. Just a few moments ago, we got the echo replied back to us. We have the balloon that popped up down here. Um, I'll show you how to disable those if that's not something you like. We can click on the message and it displays the contents of the message down here. So we see that our message was successfully received um, and this is our reply back with the message that we sent. If you would like to disable the balloon notifications, you can go again go to settings, settings, and you can deselect show notification when message received. If you would like to minimize the tray, start bin message in the tray, start bin message on user login, anything like that, you can make those changes here. Under network settings, you can change the port that BitMessage uses to connect um, to the outside network. This port is advertised to everyone else so they know how to make connections to you. You can also set your proxy settings here. So if you would like to proxy through Tor, uh, use a regular proxy server, whatever you would like, you make those changes in settings here. Demanded difficulty. This is the difficulty set for any incoming messages to one of our identities. If someone's sending you a message, um, by default, they're going to have to do the, the base minimum proof of work, which is 1.0. You cannot set this lower than 1.0. Uh, it wouldn't propagate throughout the network, even if you did. Um, and there is a small message difficulty, which is just an initial amount of proof of work that it has to do. Um, it's kind of a minimum amount that it has to do in order to send it out into the network, whereas the total difficulty is what's applied to the message size itself. So you can change these settings if you would like to make it harder for others to send you a message. Um, if you had an address that you wanted to give out publicly, um, it was broadcast you know, on Twitter or Facebook or places that maybe a, a bunch of people would get it and you might get a bunch of spam or you know, someone rogue trying to attack you or something, whatever it may be, you can set this setting higher and it will be harder for them to send you a message. Maximum acceptable difficulty allows you to set how high you are willing to go to do proof of work. So, for instance, if you were sending to someone and they had their proof of work set at 100, it would take you 100 times longer than it would take to send a regular message. So that's obviously something you probably wouldn't want to do. It would take your computer a very long time, and if you're a frequent user, it would back up all your other messages until that message was processed. So we can set our maximum acceptable difficulty here. Leaving it at zero has uh, no maximum. Again, we have the inbox tab the send tab for sending messages, the sent tab which shows all of our sent messages, your identities lists all of your identities and your labels and what stream they're a member of, 
subscriptions allows you to subscribe to mailing lists you can subscribe to broadcasts um, you can subscribe to any address that you would like and they have to send a broadcast message in order for you to receive it an address book allows you to add mailing lists um, anyone that you know your, your contacts whoever you would like that you're frequently sending to so that when you're in the sent tab you can just load it from the address book uh, blacklist and whitelist allow you to block people that are sending you malicious messages trying to you know whatever they're doing if you just annoying you you can blacklist them or you can whitelist only the people that you want to send you messages and the network status tab shows us all the network statuses about the message going up to file we can manage the keys we can delete all trashed messages this is done once a month but any messages that you delete again okay, I'll go back to inbox right click and move to trash moved items to trash there is no user interface to view your trash but it is still on the disk if you are desperate to get it back so messages are saved locally on the disk for about a month um, from your inbox so you can just go to delete all trash messages and it will automatically delete those and then if you want to regenerate a deterministic address you're able to put in um, the same criteria you have to use the exact same criteria you used when generating the original address but you're able to put in a passphrase like how many addresses you would like to generate uh, the version number, stream number, and whether or not you spent extra time to make it smaller. Uh, using the exact same settings will generate the exact same address. And that's about it. So I'm going to go ahead and quit. And we are disconnected and everything shut down. So now we could take this file, we could put it on a thumb drive, we could run it from a thumb drive, we put it in a TrueCrypt partition or a TrueCrypt container, um, whatever you'd like to do. Thanks.